Billionaire hedge fund manager and notorious sexual predator Jeffrey Epstein has been arrested for sex trafficking of minors, and this is something that we've all known about for a while, and something that the media has actually tried to sweep under the rug. But equally as important, we know that he knows things about very powerful people doing very evil things, very powerful people such as Bill Clinton, for example. And so today is therefore a great day because evil people are trembling in fear at the thought of their inexorable judgment day, and I don't know about you, but that sure puts a pep in my step, so please do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Commie. We're actually not going to detail the specifics of what Epstein did. You can definitely find that information for yourself if you'd like to, but I will warn you that it is disturbing. I would rather talk about this guy's connections and if we're going to see other big names go down for serious crimes. Now, if you had told me that the media would be headlining this fantastic news as friend of Donald Trump arrested because implying that our president is complicit in child sex trafficking as a justified means to their ends of assassinating his character, I probably would have believed you because I have lost all faith in the integrity of our media. And this really shouldn't be political, right? Like, we should all be able to just come together, have a cookout, hang these people in the middle of town square, but of course, we can't be civil with each other anymore, we can't just have that moment of unification. No, we just instantly have to, wait, he was friends with Trump? Print, that's the headline, print that. That's the, you know. And so now I feel obligated to not only clarify the extent to which that relationship manifested, but also the extent to which other relationships of Epstein's manifested. And it's interesting though, like how quickly this has become a Trump scandal. And even though we expected them to do this, of course, it's strategically a stupid move on their part, as you're about to learn, because, you know, if you want to start identifying the skeletons in this guy's closet so that you can convince your mindless audience that, yes, orange man bad, but this time, very orange man bad. That's fine. Not only are you losing whatever ground you had left to stand on when you say, oh, well, what about the children? Think of the children. Let's, you know, while we're at it, let's talk about Bill Clinton, too, because I personally think that that's a bit more interesting than the Trump relationship with Epstein, which basically doesn't even exist. Why is that a motif? For them, anytime anything bad happens, is a mass shooting? Well, it's about gun control, you know? Democratic mega donor arrested for child sex trafficking? Orange man bad, you know? It's like, from what I've seen, they've got Trump's name and the headlines, and then they write the article about Epstein and what he's being charged with, etc. And then at the end, they write something like, Epstein and Trump have been friends for decades, by the way. Here's a picture of them together. And here's a quote from 2002, where Trump says that Epstein likes beautiful women, and many of them are on the younger side. And the implication here is that, of course, Trump knew about the atrocities that his friend was committing and then he was complicit in them. Therefore, he is equally as guilty. And, you know, I'm not ego invested in Trump. I don't think anybody should be. So if it turns out that it's true that he was complicit in Epstein's behavior, then he can go rot in prison, too. But the information that we have doesn't suggest this. In fact, it actually suggests the opposite. And so, you know, the reason that these outlets are being so vague about the relationship between Trump and Epstein in the first place is because it wasn't really an actual relationship. Much of it was rooted in the fact that Trump's club, Mar-a-Lago, is in Palm Beach and Epstein liked to go there. And according to an investigation, Trump was among dozens of renowned New Yorkers who knew Epstein socially but ostracized him right after Palm Beach police discovered his operation. And Donald Trump also barred him from the Mar-a-Lago club after Epstein was soliciting an underage girl. And Virginia Roberts, also known as Jane Doe No. 3, who Epstein sexually abused and pimped to his friends starting when she was 15 years old, stated in her death position that she met Trump once at Epstein's Palm Beach mansion and that he was a quote complete gentleman and that she never saw him act inappropriately. Trump turned down numerous invitations to Epstein's hedonistic private island affectionately nicknamed Orgy Island and he only went on Epstein's plane once to hitch a ride back to New York from Florida and there's just no evidence that Trump did anything improper. And during Virginia Roberts civil case against Epstein, Brad Edwards, who was her lawyer, was going to subpoena Trump to give a deposition but Trump said that there's no need to subpoena because he would just call them immediately and so he did that and according to her lawyer Trump was open and forthright during the entire conversation and while he couldn't disclose the details of the conversation it was obvious to him that Trump was not involved in any untoward activity. There was a civil lawsuit filed against Trump and Epstein that alleged that they raped the plaintiff, whose name is Katie Johnson, in the early 1990s at a party when she was only 13. This was coincidentally filed during Trump's presidential campaign, and then it was dismissed for technical errors, and then refiled only to then be dropped. And apparently Virginia Roberts, who is said to have been Epstein's favorite, she said that she's never even heard of Katie Johnson before. And in fact, in their efforts to establish a Trump-Epstein connection, the firm Fusion GPS, which was also responsible for the unsubstantiated Trump-Russia dossier, tried to put together a Trump-Epstein report, but ultimately failed because they said that they couldn't establish a case for a close connection between Trump and Epstein and that the relationship between Clinton, Bill Clinton and Epstein was obviously stronger. 
Jeffrey Epstein has spent most of his adult life networking with the most powerful men in the world. Is it crazy to find Donald Trump on that list in his little black book of names and contact information? And of course, you could say that with anybody that's a rumored affiliate of Epstein. But when you examine things a bit closer, it gets a bit more suspicious than just a social relationship and exchanging of contact information. And as far as Trump's quote about Epstein liking young girls, do you really think that if Trump were complicit, he would just admit it like that? And also bear in mind that for guys like Trump and Epstein, girls in their mid-20s would be considered very young. So we're quick to assume that he was referencing underage girls, but I doubt it. Unless, of course, it was a subtle attack against Epstein, like an iron fist in, in a velvet glove, a dog whistle, if you will. I mean, look at what he said about Bill Clinton's involvement with it. Uh, Bill Clinton. Nice guy. Uh, got a lot of problems coming up, in my opinion, with the famous island with Jeffrey Epstein. A lot of problems. Bill Clinton became very close with Jeffrey Epstein in the early 2000s, and the two had actually met when Clinton was still president in the 1990s. Clinton took over 25 trips on Epstein's private 727 known as the Lolita Express for orgies with underage girls. He also gave Epstein 21 ways that he could contact him, basically sharing all of the phone numbers of people close to him. Interestingly enough, though, Hillary was not one of those people. The Clinton Foundation even received a donation of $25,000 in July of 2006 from the COUQ Foundation, which was being run by Epstein at the time. This donation occurring just after Epstein had been arrested for sex crimes, but before he received his incredibly favorable plea bargain. Epstein also had a longtime girlfriend named Ghislaine Maxwell, and according to the lawsuit of Virginia Roberts, Maxwell was heavily involved in Epstein's activities and is said to have assisted in Epstein's, quote, hobby of having sex with underage girls. Maxwell and five other women, according to Roberts, would even go down to the Fort Lauderdale bus station as she would troll for underage girls to be sexually pandered to her boyfriend, Jeffrey Epstein. Ghislaine became very close to Bill Clinton and even attended Chelsea Clinton's wedding in July of 2010. She had also contributed $2,300 to the presidential campaign of Hillary Clinton in March of 2007. So Bill Clinton was close with both Epstein and Maxwell, and Epstein and Maxwell were pimping underage girls to global elites. Now, we must ask ourselves, if put into that situation with those types of people, would old Bubba ever do anything sexually immoral? Would old Bubba ever do something, something perverted like that? I don't know, man. I'm gonna have to say no. I'm gonna have to say no. Bill Clinton would never do anything like that. In fact, I think he's a stand-up guy. I think he's in great shape. He's like, like me, great shape, very healthy, very not depressed, not particularly accident prone. So, you know, if anything were to happen to me, knock on wood, I'd really hope you guys would try and just figure out what went wrong there. Get to the bottom of it. Get to the bottom of it like with these right-wing propaganda outlets come up with these false scandals. So what about Whitewater and Vince Foster and Travelgate and Paula Jones and the Clinton Foundation, which Jeffrey Epstein claims to have founded? You know what all of those had in common? The Republicans made them up. Remember when Jeffrey Epstein said that Bill Clinton owed him a favor? No, no you don't. You remember when Sean Hannity told you that and you believed it because you're dumb. But it seems to me like Jeffrey Epstein used underage girls as currency for himself and his elite pals. So how did this guy, a Democrat mega donor and billionaire who was linked by the FBI and Palm Beach police to as many as 35 underage girls and allegedly provided them to his pals, how did this guy only end up serving 13 months in jail with 16 hours a day pass? Like how was he allowed to sleep nights in jail cells but spend the day at his luxury mansion in Palm Beach working? It's because he's elite. He doesn't have to play by the rules. He was running a well-organized sex trafficking ring that provided underage girls for him and his pedophile friends, many of whom were VIP figures in business and politics with names that you would recognize. How did he get away with this? Like, it's really simple. Like, I mean, you're probably like thinking of it right now. It's because Epstein was pandering these girls to many other VIP pedophiles and the government, which is supposed to protect children, did not want, in the words of Bush Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez, a quote, political mess on its hands. The elites didn't think that people would be able to handle seeing the evil that rules over them surface. That's the rationalization. The people cannot be made to know the truth about their politicians and celebrities because it will create disorder and ignorance is bliss. Originally, state and federal prosecutors only charged Epstein with one count of soliciting a prostitute. They only added soliciting a minor after objections by both Palm Beach police and the FBI. Is it crazy to think that powerful people have the ability to compromise an investigation by putting pressure on the institutions that are, in theory, supposed to bring justice? But now, we have new documents. A judge ordered the unsealing of nearly 2,000 pages of records related to a civil case that could reveal how he and his accused accomplice, Ghislaine Maxwell, allegedly trafficked underage girls. The documents that will be unsealed are from a defamation case that was settled after Epstein entered a guilty plea guilty to a single charge of soliciting and procuring a person under age 18 for prostitution. Records in the defamation case contain descriptions of sexual abuse by Epstein, along with new allegations of sexual abuse by, quote, numerous prominent American politicians, powerful business executives, foreign presidents, 
a well-known prime minister, and other world leaders. The appeals court found that the judge in the case did seal a number of documents without a justifiable reason when ordering the release. Epstein's lawyers will first get a chance to appeal, and after those legal proceedings play out, the documents will start being prepared by the court for release. And the plea deal that Epstein agreed to back in 2008 saved him from having to register as a sex offender in 31 of 50 states. But I repeat, Records in the defamation case contain descriptions of sexual abuse by Epstein, along with new allegations of sexual abuse by, quote, numerous prominent American politicians, powerful business executives, foreign presidents, a well-known prime minister, and other world leaders. Papers filed in a 2006 lawsuit alleged that Epstein installed hidden cameras around his property to record sexual activity with underage girls by prominent people for criminal purposes such as blackmail. Remember the time Epstein said that Bill Clinton owed him a favor? Could that be an incentive for powerful people to corrupt an investigation? into their pal to save themselves from going down. We've got the evidence, you freaks. We've made an arrest. We got your boy and we've got documents with your names on them. And I pray, I pray to God that justice will be served. And I pray to God that Epstein sells out every single one of you so that we know which household names have committed the most disgusting acts imaginable because these people should be put in prison. There's the justice and then the other inmates can decide their fate from there. If our legal system becomes corrupted by pedophilia, like, it's wraps. We've lost. Maybe we've already lost. Maybe these are symptoms of, of a society that is already lost. But if we are losing, you better believe that we're taking you down with us. Because if, oh, they can't handle a political mess. It's not because we're overreacting. It's because you tried to cover up a pedophile network in order to save your ass and all of your preferred friends' asses. And you know that, at the very least, you deserve life imprisonment. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe to the channel by clicking my face over there because you're not going to want to miss the next video. It's going to be top 10 reasons America's the greatest country. And, you know, I think you guys would like it because most of us in this community seem to be pretty like, oh yeah, America? Very nice. I like. So, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I May mean, God bless America.